delighted to be welcomed by Jay Harris, Welsh boxer and former Commonwealth and European champion. Jay's also fought for a world title and will talk to me about what his aspirations are for the next year or so. So yeah, cheers for coming on though. Um, appreciate your time. No problem. Yeah, he's getting your key. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so I want to take you right back. Obviously, seventeen and one. You've had a pretty big fight recently, or sort of recently, if you can call it that. Um, yeah. We'll get on to that in a bit, but I want to take you right back. So, why did you start boxing? Why? Um, I got to bo- I got to boxing through a friend of mine. I did. Um, his name's Josh Dennis, and yeah, we were just out playing. We were twelve years old, um, and he used to just dodge off every day to the gym, pretty much every day about five o'clock. And one day I just followed him, and I I, I went down there. I used to go into ABC in Swansea, liked it, and went home to my my parents like. And they couldn't believe it because they tried pretty much everything. Football, rugby, yeah. karate, everything. And I just, to be honest, the rugby and the football I didn't take too very well. It was way too small for rugby. Didn't like that at all. Um, and yeah, I just took to boxing. And my, my dad, Fedus, he said, if like, anybody's going to train you, like it's, it's going to be him. So he came up the next day. And that was it then. I've been there ever since, pretty much. Did, he, did your dad obviously be an ex-fighter? Did he try and influence you a bit younger or did he just sort of let you take your own path? No, never. Never influenced me whatsoever. Obviously, when I was younger, I, I didn't re- really remember him fighting much. Just um, knew sometimes that he went away. And um, and my mother showed me the clippings, to be fair, of, of him fighting. So I didn't really know about much because I was so young but he never influenced me in, into boxing um, I did, I t- done it by myself I tried everything as I said I tried well I went swimming I tried karate I tried football tried rugby you name it I tried it like and boxing's the one I stuck to so am I right in saying your uncle was a boxer as well yeah and yeah. My, gra- my, my grandfather was as well but oh, he was in the RAF as well yeah Okay, yeah, so, um, so I uh, said to my dad, obviously, I got Jay Harris to uh, do an interview with, and he said, all oh, right, I was, uh, I, he said, he reckons he was in the same class in school as your uncle. Oh, no way. Yeah, apparently, so, um, I don't know what school he was at, but I think, was it, your dad might have been, like, the year above or something as well, I'm not sure, but. Yeah, so, yeah, about two years above my dad was. Um, yeah, so he yeah. Said, I'm not sure what school it was, uh, otherwise, but he reckons, yeah, so I don't know. Well, I think my dad was a Port Mead boy, so it could have been yeah, it might have been. Yeah. Yeah, he said there was a few um, in that school, but so when um, you said you started boxing at twelve, was it sort of an instant enjoyment? Um, um yeah, it was. It was good. Like it, I just never done anything like that before, and it just really, really, I just really enjoyed it. I liked everything about it, and when I got got home and told my father. And he, he did tell me, like, it's, it's, it's not a sport you can play with. Like, it's not like a football game or it's a serious sport. So if, I, if I'm going to take it serious, I have to be 100% committed, like, and I have been. And it's been great. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world, like. So that sort of commitment to it, did that come straight away or did it take you a couple of years to think, right, I'm good at this, I can go far? Um, oh, I don't know. No, not really. I, I, I went into it first because my mate was there as well. Um, it, it was like a more of an enjoyment because we was together like pretty much. And then um, it started to get serious then because in the first year, I think I only had, I only had like six amateur fights as a twelve year old like, and they entered me in the in the Welsh Welsh uh, Welsh championships. And um, my father thought at the time it was a bit too soon, and. I won it. So after that, then it was pretty much like I took it, re- took it seriously, and the, the rest. Then I, I won, I, I think, like five Welsh titles, to, uh, British gold, and uh, then turned over. Then about twenty one, I did twenty one, twenty two. And so was was that always going to be a plan? So obviously you said you went down as you, with with your mate there. You started enjoying it. Did it always? I don't say you started enjoying it, but when did you think I'll turn pro? What what was it? Was it because you were doing well in the amateurs, or did you? I think- done well in the amateurs, but one of the main reasons was um, I was meant to go to the Commonwealth Games, and um, 
I they had like a little tournament sort of thing uh, going on, and um, I won the tournament, and uh, they didn't take me anyway. They t- they took uh, Andrew Selby and said, which I don't I don't mind like, but I didn't get a chance to fight him in, in the amateurs to to even prove myself that I that, that I could go. They just took him anyway, and after that, I said to my dad like pretty much I said that I'm gonna win the Welsh and the British next year I said and then I'm gonna turn over and that's what I did I won the Welsh I won the British um but fair dues I had a, had a call off a of GB saying if I, if I wanted to try out the bear and it just didn't interest me at the time I just was like I, I had my mindset on turning over and I turned over you certainly took to it well mate you well you well you, well, you faced 16 no 17 fight to win them all um but obviously, t- was it against, um, I've got down here, uh, Thomas S. on the for your Commonwealth title? Yeah. So that's obviously a big, big title, mate. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and to be fair, I think Thomas Son was still one of my toughest fights I've had, I think. Um, he's a right tough, tough fella. Uh, it was a massive learning experience for myself because previously I, I only went like six rounds before that. And it was only my 10th fight when I fought Thomas Somba. And they've just said, um, at the time I was with Warren as well, Frank Warren. And he said, give, give me a shot, a title. So they, they, they put me in with a Somba, who was um, just won that title as well. Um, and yeah, it was just a massive dive into the, to the, the 12-round experience, pretty much. And uh, I, fair dues, I, I took... Well, I was tired in about the seventh or eighth, and then I had like a little second win then in, in the in the championships rounds then, and uh, I thought I won it quite comfortably. But yeah, it was still one of the one of the toughest fights I've had, definitely. Was in terms of learning experience, we got it down. Was it your first twelve rounder? Yeah, first twelve rounder. Um, because probably, probably I only did sixty, and some of them were stoppages within four as well. So I did. I've never gone past six rounds. So. And we had about six or six weeks to train for it as well. And yeah, it was just, just bags of experience for myself, really. Fantastic, mate. It was an experience fight, definitely. But would you say, like, in terms of the fighter or fighting 12 rounds, obviously you're still a fairly young fighter, you can imagine. Would it be fighting somebody of his experience or the 12 rounds that you probably benefited from more that fight? A uh, bit of both, I would have said. Just tr- trying to to pace myself in the 12 rounds trying to get the experience of like getting my brain then I'm going 12 rounds because when as I said when I was in the six well not six seven to eight in my head I thought I was tired I was like Jesus Christ this um, seventh round and I'm, I'm tired because it was an odd fight anyway um I think I lost the next round after that um and then I, I seemed to get like a little bit of a second win going in in the in the ninth tenth eleventh and it, it just gives you that little bit more experience, you know, for past fights and how, how to train and how, how your body works, where, where, how, how your fitness is. And it gives you that sort of experience to deal with it. Like, I was going to say, I read some, I've got it on Wikipedia, just so I don't know how true it is. Do you work part time on Amazon as well? Is that a- yeah, I, I did at the time with, um, with pretty much all my fights. Even up to the Martinez fight, there's, I've, I've been working. There. And um, it's only recently now with the help of some good sponsors like A&R Specialists, uh, Luminous and Sealift. They um, they pay me a, wa- and a wage now and I, I can be a full, full-time full athlete. Well, especially A&R Specialists, they pay, pay me every week and they, they, uh, I couldn't thank them enough. Like Without them or him, I wouldn't be where I am now. So is that giving you more confidence, though, to know that you can focus fully on your boxing? Yeah, definitely, because um, with the Amazon thing as well, see, I was working night shifts. So on the Thursday and Friday nights, my diet was, was a bit over all over the shop. And instead, we used to have like a, a certain time that I had to eat by, blah, 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 and all that. But with the Amazon, you had to change it. So we'd be eating late at night because it was, I didn't finish till like five in the morning, six in the morning. So I had to change it. And um, But with this now, it's just going to, I think it'll kick into another level, I think. Yeah. So you obviously then, like I said, c- continued during beat and run. You end up fighting Angel Moreno, was it, for the European title? That's right, yeah. Up again, didn't it? So how was that? Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, that was another another great experience as uh, Moreno again was coming off a world title challenge. He fought Charlie Edwards um, not long before, to be fair. I think it was like three months before. Um, and then they, they gave me the open shot against Moreno. I took it straight away. Um, yeah, and it was it was a great fight again. Um, but in that fight, normally Moreno was coming forward, and I, I think I took it to him and and won really comfortably in that run, in in that fight for the European title. But do you think like the way you've done it as well, like stepping up? You went Commonwealth European, and you've obviously now gone on to fight for world title. Is it that stepping stone you almost need as a pro boxer? Because you think all these amateurs, even though like the Olympic ones, you think the ones that get big names before they go pro. Do you yeah, feel yeah. they almost get a head start? But, yeah, they do. Um, uh, a lot of them probably do because they have a good, good pet, uh, like a good pedigree to start. They do the the amateur stuff and then they do into the WSB in it, which is like a like a build up to turn pro first. They do the five rounds and no head guards and stuff like that. Um, but oh, some of them also get rushed in too soon as well, and they end up losing too soon. But um, yeah, I think I've done it the, the right way. Um, it, it took some time, it, like the Commonwealth, the European, and world. But I think it's the right, right way of doing it. Is do it, I've done the domestic route first, and then, and then, then I've stepped up to world, which I think is is the right way of doing it. So about your domestic route, you ha- you haven't yet fought for a British title. Would that be something you'd be interested in, or is it just looking for world fighters at the minute? Well, if if it come up, I would be yeah. I, you, as I said, you've got to take the opportunities as, as they come. Um, and I know at the at the minute, I know the British Fly title. Uh, I think so, someone has already signed to fight for it, so I'm out with that question at the minute. So, um, yeah, but it's something I'd look for down the line. Definitely, if the opportunity come up, I I wouldn't see why not. Just out of interest, is there anything I've seen on your Twitter? There's fight news coming soon. Is there anything brief you can give me quickly before? Uh, I can't announce it yet until they announce it. Sorry, but yeah, it is. It is fight news. Um, so something's uh, happening. <laughs> yeah, something's happening, but I can't announce it yet, unfortunately. Oh. That's what I'm saying. Because, like I said, I, your last fight was obviously Martinez. And I remember it was. I got up to watch that, and I think that was probably the one you announced yourself with, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was a it was a hell of a fight. I've watched it so many times, so I think. No, I, I have as well, mate. I mean, I came back from a night. I was down at uni. I came back from a night out and uh, got me kebab and was just watching. It was brilliant. <laughs> but, but I don't watch about that much, but I remember the commentators having to apologise if it was your dad swearing or something they could hear. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. He's swearing in the corner and stuff. Yeah, he kind of, kind of, uh, can't control his emotions sometimes. He can't see. He chucks the odd swear word out. No, nah, it's brilliant, mate. Um, before we dive in too much into that, I want to tell you obviously after Marino. Class is a step up again. We're talking about amateur pedigrees. Did you fight Paddy Barnes? Um, yeah. Like you said, probably a perfect example of somebody who was maybe thrown in a bit too early. Didn't you fight for a world title after five or six fights? Um, would you say that was too early for him? But how did you find him as a fighter? Uh, do you know what? Paddy is is a great fighter. I can't. He is a good fighter. I can't, we um the previous fight before he had me up sparring up in Scotland with him, so I knew roughly where I was anyway. Um, and as soon as they come up then, um, in his backyard in Belfast as well, it was a no-brainer. Um, I knew if I beat Paddy Barnes, who we again challenged for another world title. Um, it's, it's a hell of a name on the record. That's what I thought. That was in my, and the step is stone in to a world title. And I got to be fair, the atmosphere and stuff in Belfast was outstanding. It was just, it is possibly one of the best I've had, I think, the atmosphere, you build up to it. It was, it was just great. It was, you no, know, it was no animosity against me and Paddy at all. We, I, I can't call him a friend. Um, he's a lovely fellow, like, but it was just the thing we had to do, like. I said about the atmosphere. Was that probably your first big test away from home? Would you say because think about it, like, like you said, this Northern Ireland box, especially in Belfast, they've had a number of fighters over the well past few years probably look at Michael Conlon and Carl Frampton etc was that a big test for you in such going into such an atmosphere yeah, yeah definitely I was well as I said I was going into his backyard um, to be fair mind, I took I took 50 boys over with me um, 
So I had a good good following going over. Um, as I said, he was the gold, golden boy over there. Everyone knew him. Um, but yeah, I just took it took it to him. Um, I'd, I again, I I tried to. Th- to try to think it's it's just a ring at the end of the day. It's just only me and him. Just a ring. No one else is in in there. It's just me and him. And I and I did the job. And uh, yeah, it was a, it was such a great night. Even even after it, people were fantastic. I can't I can't thank I couldn't thank them enough. Like it was it was awesome. Like, would you say after that fight, you where did you think you stood in terms of fighters at that stage? Things you said. You think Paddy Barnes, big name, as a fighter? Did you think a shot would come after that? Um, I no, I, I, I don't really know. I didn't think it was going to come that soon, if I'm honest. Um, because, but I was quite high up in in the governing bodies anyway. Um, I was, I think, I was ranked that after the Paddy Barnes fight, it, it, it knocked me up like to number three, I think, in the IBF, and I was like number six in the WBO and. Six, seven, or something like that, and the WBC. Um, so I thought I was knocking on a world title, definitely, but I didn't think it would come. I thought I'd have another fight, maybe defend the European or something like that, and then it, and then I'd have, to, and then I jump into the, a world title fight. But as I said, you've got to take these opportunities as they come. And as soon as that world title got given to me, it was no, there was a no brainer. I was, I was taking it. So how did it come about then? Obviously, you weren't expecting it. Was a big shock to you? Yeah, well, I was in Paris. It was. It was uh, me, my girlfriend, and uh, my stepdaughter. We went to Disneyland Paris for the New Year, and um, yeah, we were just in the hotel next to me. My my phone, my battery died on the phone, didn't it? So I come back, put it on charge. Next thing you know, my phone's going mental. It's like all these messages, ring me, ring me. My father's going nuts, ring me, ring me. So I rang him. I was like, what's going on? He's like, we've got the shot. Like, we've got a shot. The world. I was like, no way. <laughs> I was like, ah. And I obviously was ecstatic, like, told my girlfriend and, and uh, Ellie upset. And she, they were just over the moon. Like, I, I, t- I told my, uh, for my manager and he's like, we got a great shot list. Like, and I was like, this is unbelievable. I didn't think, I said, I'm in Paris at the minute. No, I said, I'm in Disneyland. I said I'll I'll get back into camp when when I when I arrive like, and that that's what I did. I got I got back on the Monday morning early early in the morning about six o'clock. Had a little kip and then went straight into training. Then it was too away. Were you, was it almost a bit too much excitement in the first few days, or were you just raring to go? Oh, raring to go I was. Just get get the weight off and just get get my head down. Then. So no one wanted to ask you about you obviously. Martinez is obviously now fought a number of fighters, probably quite familiar to a lot of British fans. He's fought Andrew Salby and famously fought um, uh, Charlie Edwards. Nee. So, um, yeah. what did you? I want to ask, sort of ask your opinion on that because they're both very good fighters. But more in terms of Charlie Edwards, what did you think of that fight? Obviously, how it ended. What was your opinion on it? Did you watch it? Well, the Charlie Edwards fight. Yeah. Um, how it ended because he took a lot of stick for it, didn't he, Martinez? Yeah, he deserved to get disqualified definitely because Charlie was down. He was down on his knee, and it was the, it was a split. It was a couple of seconds after, and he still whacked him in the ribs. Anyway, I, he perhaps he was over eager, Martinez. But yeah, I, I straight. I I couldn't agree more with the decision of a disqualification. On that even though I was thinking. If he didn't do it, I'd have thought that he would have won anyway. Maybe the next round or something. But yeah, the disqualification was right, definitely. Did you see, so obviously in those fights, you saw good fighters. Did you see any weaknesses in him that you thought you could take advantage of? I knew, I knew that like Martinez, he's a strong fighter, and this, his game plan is just to come forward. That is his game plan and work the body. But when he was doing that, he was leaving himself a lot open. A lot comes a bit square up. To be honest, he does a lot of things wrong, <laughs> but he's such a tough guy, like, and um, just seems to break his opponents down pretty, pretty well. But he didn't break me down, so I'm happy with that. I was going to say, is that something that you obviously now take a bit more confidence into whoever you fight next? Because somebody as tough as him, you've probably shown your worst. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, I knew it was, I had. Well, I had a brilliant preparation for that fight anyway. It was a sparring, Cali fight. Um, 
pretty much done the camp with him, sparring him every week. So, and to be fair, Cal is like one of the hardest punches I've been been in the ring with. And um, yeah, that seemed to like, I would say it, like prepare me in the best sort of way, like, you know, condition me with the sparring that we were doing. Um, and it was, they were great rounds. And yeah, it prepared me the best way, I think. And I was ready. What did you think about fighting in America? Obviously, it was your first time doing that. And it's quite a big yeah, step. straight away. Yeah, straight away. As soon as it was like, it's a random place like Texas. It's not like Vegas or anything like that. But it's America, isn't it? And it, again, it's, it's pretty much on his doorstep as well. Because Mexico and Texas are not far from each other. as full of Mexicans and stuff. But yeah, it was a, it was a great, the old week, fight week, right, was awesome. It was one of the best experiences I've ever had, I think. It was like the likes of standing there one time doing the face-offs and I had like Joseph Parker next to me, Mikey Garcia, that Jesse Vargas, Chocolate Tito, um, Callen and Martinez. We were all, all standing there in the line. Like, it was surreal. So what's it like being in that company though? Like those names you just yeah, mentioned? Amazing. And, you know, they were all nice as well. They all shook hands, the pictures with everybody speak, spoke nice and everything. They, they were just all lovely people. Like. So, obviously, going into the fight now, you probably were the big underdog going into it. Hey, what was it that you thought you could win? As I say, you said he makes a lot of mistakes, you said, but he's a tough guy. What, so, what did you think you could do to him? I just thought I had... I just thought I was a different fighter compared to like Selby and Charlie. I I, I knew I was a, a tougher fighter. Um, not afraid to, to mix it up, and I knew he was gonna have a shock. I don't know. It's just, it's just something you know. No, and we and we worked really hard in the gym. I I knew we prepared the right way. I knew I was a, a better boxer in in general. And I I still think I'm a better boxer than him now. He, I know he's beat me, but I I, I just think if if we had a rematch, it's, I win the rematch. So that's something you'd uh, welcome. Definitely, hundred percent. Yeah. Do you reckon you'd sell out the Liberty Stadium with that? <laughs> Maybe it's well worth it, isn't it. Worth a go, mate. Honestly, because you think some of those, a lot of those rounds, you probably won. Really, it could have gone either way. Some of them because they were close rounds. Yeah, I know. I've watched it back a, a load of times now, and there's there's a few rounds in there. Well, a lot of rounds. I think I could have nicked, and. Uh, they, you know, they just give it like to the champions, and if they cl- they close, which is, I think is wrong. I think I I saw like that Matthew Mack didn't say one one point uh, uh One of the rounds was I was winning all the round, and I think Martinez hit me with a a shot at the end of the round, a good shot, right then, not my head back, and then he give it give it to that round to him because of that. And I was thinking, how how can you give uh, if I won all the round, you can't just give a round to someone over one shot. Unless I got gone down, but I didn't. But I don't know. I think some people just watch it differently, I think. So how frustrating is it to you now, watching it back, thinking maybe I could have done this a little bit better, would you say? Yeah, it's obviously you, you, you pick holes in your, your performance and stuff like that. But then when you, when you do that, it's always something you can work on when you get back in, isn't it? So you, you can work it on in the gym. And... Uh, that's, I, I wasn't like I didn't think my performance was bad at all. I, I was actually thought it was really good as it goes. Um, so I have no regrets on anything I did, even even taking a knee. Well, I have to take a knee, but um, no, as you say, you, you just pick little holes, take them back, and then work on them in the gym. And... Well, would you say it was your biggest learning experience? Obviously, the big stage of the fight, the quality of the fighter. And obviously, then yeah, not yeah. Fighting the way you did, yeah, like, definitely. yeah, the big, as you say, big fight night in there, pretty much. So, your energy about the week, trying to soak it all up, uh, not get overwhelmed by it, pretty much. Um, yeah, so it's a massive experience, massive learning experience as well. So, were you still were you were you with Frank Warren at that point, or was he before? No, no, had, had no, I left Frank Warren before. I just with MTK now. I am. Ah, okay. So I wasn't sure because I'm trying to figure it out if I can remember. But um, so now, obviously, looking forward to your next fight. There's something happening. 
Um, where do you see is where you see stuff in like a year's time? Because, like, like we said a few times now, you pretty much announce yourself against Martinez. Yeah, yeah. Um, a couple of years time, I'm hoping to have one of them belts from my waist. Hopefully, I'd I'd love another shot of one of them, any of them, to be fair. Um, so yeah, that's where I see myself in a couple of years time. I think. Hey, would you welcome a fight with somebody like Andrew Selby, you know, another Welsh lad? Do you know what? I don't even know what he's doing at the minute. I don't know whether he's boxing or anything at the minute. There's loads of rumours that he's retired and stuff like that, so I I couldn't tell you. But it would be a, it's, it's, it's a great fight for Wales, if I'm honest. Because yeah, that would probably attract a lot of fans and probably set you up as well, because it's a big, it'd be another big stage, wouldn't it? So, yeah, yeah. It has yeah. to be a pop. Yeah, I was going to say, because I think that when I was researching, I think the WBO belt's vacant at the minute. So I don't know what would happen with yeah. that. Um, they've already scheduled a fight for that. It's McGremo. Well, it was McGremo, Nikitani, I think it was. But I don't know what's happening with it now. I, I know that Nikitani is fighting for it. I don't know what's happening with the McGre- McGremo fe- fella at the minute. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's because you don't welcome a fight, maybe a weight class higher or two. Because I'd say there's a lot of big fights at Super Fly and Bantamweight. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's super fly maybe, but I wouldn't go up the band them. Um, I'm to be fair, right? I'm happy where I am. I make the weight good. Um, I'm big for the weight, so I'm no. I honestly, I'm I'm happy staying up fly for the time being. Um, if I can't, if my body starts to change and I can't make fly, I will go up then. But at the minute, I'm making fly comfortable, so I, I think I'll just stick at that for a minute. So best case scenario, you just want to keep going, try and win the flyweight world title. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That would be reasonable. That's basically answered my question, but I was just sort of on a personal note, like, um, obviously with your next fight, is it, do you feel, obviously, yeah, with the best of respect, you probably weren't the biggest known fighter until Martinez, probably until Paddy Barnes, actually. Do you almost feel now you might not necessarily go into fights as an underdog? Is it a different sort of pressure? Maybe. Um... Yeah, I think so. Um, I think a lot more people know who I am now, um, especially after the Martinez fight and the Paddy Barnes fight. It's got my name out there. So, yeah, I, w- I don't think I'll be going into any a lot of fights the underdog anymore. Is that something you'd prefer, or would you prefer it to be? You know, I don't. Re- I don't really care. Um, yeah, I didn't care. It was the under uh, the the underdog against Martinez? Sometimes the buggies are wrong, and so I don't, yeah. I don't care. There's, the buggies are wrong sometimes, and so. So could we ever see like a rematch between you and Martinez, or is it just focusing on yourself? At the Hopefully, yeah. if if Eddie fancies it, or um, I have to work my way back up. Um, yeah, hopefully in the future we'll we'll get a rematch on. Brilliant. I think that basically some of me. But thanks a lot for your time, anyway. No worries, mate. Absolutely no worries at all. So yeah.